Hello there everyone, I'm UXW Bill, and right now I'm making this video in the wee early hours of the morning so that you... okay, not really. Most of my videos are made very late at night or so late that it's early. But in this particular case, I'm hoping to get this video uploaded in time for those of you who happen to watch my videos to take advantage of a really great deal on a decent little multimeter. This is the General Tool Smart Model TSO4 Connected Precision Digital Multimeter. And if we look at the package right here, you can see that a great deal is made of this thing's Bluetooth capability. That is to say, it can relay a reading wirelessly from the meter to an Android or an iOS device. Big whoop, I say. I care about neither one of those, and while I've been piddling around with a Windows phone lately, unfortunately, as per usual, Windows phone is left out in the cold. I am, however, entertaining thoughts of trying my hand and dusting off some long-disused tools of mine at perhaps writing a software package for a personal computer with Bluetooth capability that could in turn communicate with this unit and collect data. I did download the app on my dad's iPhone. I'm sorry to say that I didn't get much further than that because I was busy with something else at the time and it demanded registration, which quite frankly I thought was, again, pretty doggone stupid. But this is actually a much better deal than it would seem because this particular multimeter has a secret. That's right, as per usual, it is so much more fun to play with a manufacturer's devices outside of their published specifications. It's much more fun to play with your toys while disregarding the instructions. At least I find that to be true. Of course, if you're running around right now about to give yourself one eye in some very clever manner or to level your house in some no doubt spectacular form of explosion, well, guess what? I don't know you, I never said that, and <laughs> this channel will not exist by the time the authorities come around. So, I went ahead and popped the cover on one of these. My father actually bought two of them. And I thought it was interesting what I found inside here. In fact, it was very interesting. No mention is made on this box anywhere of true RMS capability. And that's a big deal for a multimeter. If it's not mentioned on the box, you can be 99% sure that it doesn't have that capability. And apparently the people who sell this thing here in the United States, they decided not to market that capability. They'd much rather talk about things that I don't care about, like cell phone apps. But it turns out, folks, this meter bases on the DreamTech International DTM0660 integrated circuit. That's a multimeter on a chip sitting right there on the board. And that means that while it is completely undocumented, this meter falls into the 1% of multimeter style devices that have true RMS voltage measurement capability. Now that really only makes a difference in the alternating current measurement mode and it also only makes a difference if you're measuring a device with a non-sinusoidal output waveform like say modified sine wave inverter, audio frequency output of some kind, something that isn't a nice smooth sine wave like the uh, current coming from your home electrical system certainly ought to be. That is to say if you are of course running from the power grid. This multimeter ordinarily will cost you thirty dollars here in the United States of America but right now and I mean literally right now until the end of the day on June 4th 2017 the Menards Home Improvement Store is selling this meter with a mail-in rebate good for a merchandise credit check. That is that is to say it's not a cash refund or a check that you get in the mail that you can just take anywhere in cash or deposit or whatever you'd like. You actually have to use the refund to buy something in the store. But I'm pretty sure that with all of the things Menards is constantly to be found selling that you can probably find something along the lines of what you would want in their store. Personally, I do not like going to Menards, even though their prices are oftentimes very good on stuff. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they place a turnstile at the entrance to their store, and usually the gate to get around it is very often found to be locked. Fortunately, being the scofflaw that I am, I have found out that very frequently it's possible to go in through the outdoor. So you can get this true RMS capable meter for twenty dollars and then 
pres presuming that you do eventually get your merchandise refund credit check in the mail, which probably takes about a million billion years, you actually do have until the end of the month to get that part mailed. So you've got some time there, but if you want this deal, you'd better go to your Menards store today <laughs> and, and get it, because after that it's over and, well, I can certainly not speak to whether or not they might extend the deal. I don't think that they will. I think that when it's over, it's over. And folks, this is a heck of a deal. Why do I say that? Where's what backs it up? Well, if again we take a look at the internals of this multimeter, this is an inexpensive device. There can be no doubt about that. But it seems that the quality in terms of how it was put together is actually pretty good. The parts don't look like they were simply thrown at the circuit board and then a bucket full of solder poured down on them. The two protective fuses, both current ranges, are fully protected with fuses, are of the ceramic type. I don't know if they're actually sand filled. They are also rated for 600 volts DC. Now, over on the front of this multimeter, it says that it is a Category 3 device. Where does it say that? It says somewhere on here. I know that it does. There it is, right there. 600 volts Category 3. I don't imagine that this is truly a Category 3 instrument, but the fib factor certainly seems to be a lot smaller than it usually is. And of course, as usual, this is just being sold under a random name here in the United States. If you look at the corner of the circuit board, as I'm doing right now, you can see that it says MS8238D. That's right, this would appear to be an instrument manufactured by Precision Mastec, who is a very large and very real and very serious manufacturer of meters in China. So, the quality should be at least acceptable. Of the couple of Mastec meters that I have floating around, They've all done perfectly well by me, and well, again, they're probably not the safest thing out there on the market. They're certainly far better than a lot of other no-name meters would be. As far as measurement ranges on this thing, you get all kinds of stuff. You get voltage, temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. You get a diode test, continuity beeper, I don't know if it's latched or not, an ohms resistance test, microamps, milliamps, amps up to 10, I believe a 9-volt battery test and a 1.5-volt battery test for your AAA, AA, C, and D cells, and also a non-contact alternating current voltage detector. You can also defeat this meter's automatic power-off capability if, while turning it on, you hold down the function button. It will beep to indicate that you have done so, and a little time clock symbol will actually disappear in the display. I think the display is backlit, but I'm not 100% sure about that. And in future, I may do a more comprehensive review of this multimeter, but I just wanted to take, take a moment and let all of you know what an unexpected bargain this thing really seems to be. And looking back here at the protection again, there are no MOVs on the board, but we do at least have a couple of uh, positive thermal coefficient resistors, which should help to save the day if you accidentally connect this thing to a live circuit while you are in the resistance measurement mode. That tends to produce a lot of sparks and maybe even a bang or two. I don't know how well this meter would hold up to such a catastrophic occurrence, but the presence of the PTCs on the board whose resistance increases as their temperature goes up, usually due to a large current flowing through them, does show willing. So, as always folks, thank you for watching. I know this video sounds kind of whipped together because, well, it is. <laughs> it's one of those one clean take things that I just uploaded because this turned out to be a heck of a deal in disguise and I thought that I would like to pass it on to all of you. So thank you for watching and certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one. Oh, one more thing. Because the packaging for this multimeter seems to have been designed to thwart shoplifters, when in reality, all it's actually going to do is frustrate legitimate buyers. Let me pass along a little tip that I discovered when I opened the second package. The flap on the box is a deception. It's not real. It's actually part of this uh, cardboard assembly up here that is bonded together. I'm not really sure how they assembled this box. But if you want to make your life a whole lot easier, be able to open this thing up without, say, a chainsaw, face mask, chain mail, maybe even a knight's suit of armor, stuff like that. <laughs> a football helmet of some kind, perhaps. Get yourself a knife like this and very carefully cut along here. You might have to make a few passes 
But when you do, it becomes infinitely easier to get this open. There's still these irritating interlocking tabs here, but at least you've managed to get in there without maiming yourself along the way, or hopefully having to involve any power tools. Well, as usual, the devil's in the details. There are a few things that I forgot to include in the main portion of this video, which means now that instead of doing a straight upload from the camcorder's memory card, I have to edit these videos together, recompress them, and then upload the result to YouTube. I'd like to go to sleep sometime, but there is no rest for the wicked. First thing I'd like to talk about are the test leads that came with this little fellow. I've seen better, and I've certainly seen far, far worse. These are pretty nice, because right out of the box, as you can see, they actually come with little protective sheaths. You can take these things off that serve to insulate all but the tiniest portion of the test lead. And this can be invaluable when you're working in a crowded environment with lots of electrically hot components around, especially if you don't fancy creating some sort of a short circuit between two things that really shouldn't be connected to one another, like, say, two legs of electrical power in a split-phase system, or even a three-phase system, although this is definitely not the kind of meter that you should be working on three-phase anything with. So here we have three meters set up to demonstrate why true RMS capability is important. Now the technical details are way beyond the scope of this video. If you want to know about that, you can certainly look it up online. There are also some good videos here on YouTube, including one by a fellow who hasn't uploaded in a long time by the name of Neuralgnar, or Neuralnar, I'm not sure how he pronounces it now, it's been so long. But he talks about the exciting subject of true RMS multimeters and why you just might actually want to have one. So here we have a decidedly not true RMS capable DT830 Cheapy, which I would advise rather strongly against ever connecting to a line voltage anything. But remember, UXW Bill is a professional bad example operating on a closed course and you should never attempt anything he does. In here, in the middle, we have the general multimeter with Bluetooth capability, and then we have China's finest no-name ET310A True RMS scope meter to show you that the output of this inverter, specifically this Best Power Patriot SPS 450A, 450VA standby power supply, is most assuredly not a true sine wave. So we'll turn this around, although it weighs about a million pounds, and then I will probably make myself look like a pro on camera by wrangling all these multimeter leads. I have no idea what you might actually be able to see here, and it would be nothing short of one of the seven wonders of the world if all of these meter leads end up making proper connection to this thing. Oh, and this is, of course, a dangerous thing to do if you don't know what you're doing, so don't do it, unless you do. Not if you think you do! But if you really do. And unlike a lot of old uninterruptible power supplies, this one actually is cold start capable in a very direct way, and it's got a good battery in it. Okay, and right away I can tell the scope meter's not making good contact. Nor is the little DT830. There we go. That's good enough for an example, I would think. There you can see that the general meter is producing the correct and expected number, about 121 volts AC, whereas the little DT830 cheapy, when it's not giving me a great deal of frustration by not making good electrical contact, is reading way low in terms of output voltage. And then the scope meter, which is also proving to be fairly vexatious by not making good electrical contact, although it is now, can be seen to indicate that this inverter definitely has a stepped square wave output characteristic. This is what marketing people refer to as a simulated sine wave or a stepped approximation to a sine wave. It is little more than a square wave with periodic drops to zero level or very close. In fact, if I change the uh, time base setting here, you can see that a little more clearly. But that should serve as sufficient proof that this inexpensive little general tools and instruments meter is in fact a true RMS device.